Hello folks, today we're going to look at an LED driver circuit, which is a good example of how you can keep current constant in spite of changes in beta. So one thing we know about an LED, light emitting diodes, their brightness is a function of the current flowing through them. The higher the current, the brighter the LED. We also know that LED voltages uh, vary a bit. It's not the 0.7 that we would expect to see with a standard rectifying diode. And we might get uh, 1.8 volts, 2.1 volts, all depends on the construction of the LED, its color, and so forth. So we have this issue that if, um, if we hook it up directly to maybe a little logic circuit, the logic circuit might not produce enough current to produce a sufficient brightness. So what we're going to do is have the output of the circuit drive the base of a transistor, and we can use the transistor to multiply up that current so we get a decent sized current for good brightness on the LED. But if the beta varies, right, remember the preceding video, if the beta varies, we don't want the current to vary because that means the LED brightness will vary. So imagine you had a seven segment display and each of the segments is a slightly different brightness. That's going to look kind of goofy, right? So we want something very consistent. Well, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take a, a resistor in the collector. Here is our LED. Here's the transistor. And a base resistor. So typically we might have something like, oh, 200 ohms for the collector resistor. 5 volt power supply for the collector. The logic coming in on the base might be a 5 volt, 0 volt. In other words, 5 volt high, 0 volt low. We might have, you know, 5K ish in the base. Now, suppose the LED voltage is the forward voltage is 2 volts. And we'll further say that uh, beta nominally is 100. Okay, now notice that in this circuit, the LED current is the collector current, just by the way it's configured. Okay, all right, so we have two options here. Um, the plus five, the high, and the zero, right, the low. So we want the plus five to turn on the LED. All right, so if Vn is zero, then... Looking around the base loop over here, right? We look at our, our loop. Right? Remember, we basically have what we're saying is there's a 5 volt power supply out here. So what we have is a 5 volt rise, drop on the base resistor, drop on the base emitter. Now we know the base emitter drop, that's uh, 0.7 if it's on, right? Well, what is it if, if it's off? Right? Well, if there's no rise, obviously there's no drop. So what ends up happening is your base current is zero. If your base current's zero, the collector current's zero. Oops, that should be amps there, sorry. And your collector current, like I said, is zero, which means the LED's off. Now, we turn around, we say, okay, uh, put the five on, right? What do we have around this loop? Well, like we said, 0.7 there, 5 here. The balance must be dropping across the base resistor. So IB would have to be VBB minus VBE divided by RB, right? which is going to be 5 volts minus the 0.7 for the forward drop. RB is 5K. So our base current is going to be 0.86 milliamps, right? So that's the driving circuit back here. And if this was a logic circuit, it only has to produce a little less than a milliamp, okay? Now, if this was linear, and this is important to remember, if this was a linear operation, what we would do is say collector current equals beta times IB. And if we did that, we'd say, well, it's 100 times the 860 microamps, 0.86 milliamps. 
then we'd get 86 mils. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, 86 mils through 200 ohms is going to produce a voltage way bigger than 5 volts. All right, so what ends up happening? We must be in saturation, all right? So the question is, what is IC sat? If this circuit is in saturation, then the LED current is the saturation current. Well, let's just look at the uh, KVL for this, all right? What we see, if we come down this way, right? We just sort of do a KV loop, loop this way. All right, back to the negative part of the power supply. What we see is uh, VCC has to equal the drop on the collector resistor plus the LED drop plus the drop on the transistor, right? VCE. So if we're assuming this is in saturation, then we mean VCE sat. Okay, um, you know, we know most of these things and from this we can figure out what the uh what the current is right so i led or ic ic sat whatever you want to call it we're going to take vcc subtract off the v led subtract off the vce sat And divide that by RC. Right? All I did is I just plugged in here IC times RC for VRC, and then I just solved it for IC. Okay, so the saturation current would be the 5 volts minus the 2 volts for the LED, and VCE sat for a circuit like this might be a tenth of a volt, you know, 100 millivolts. Ideally, you would say it's zero, but if we want to be just a smidge more accurate, you know, we'll throw in a tenth of a volt. 200 ohms. Okay. All right. So we grind, grind, bleh, grind this through. And we come up with a current of 14.5 mils. Which is way smaller than 86. So... Yes, this is true. ILED is equal to IC sat. IC sat is the biggest it can get. Okay, so the transistor um, is on, which means the LED is on. Okay. Transistors in saturation. Beauty. Okay. Hey, what about the beta of 100? Well, remember, if we're in saturation, the beta falls, collapses to whatever is dictated by the circuit elements. Effectively, your beta right now, or I should say the transistor's beta, is collector current divided by base current. That's always the case. Your IC is 14 and a half mils. Your IB is 0.86 mils. Well, you divide that out, and you get 16.9. Well, here's the deal. Any transistor, right? Any transistor with a Q, with, excuse me, with a beta that's at least 16.9 puts the transistor in saturation. So I could have a big variation, right? And I could have a transistor with beta of 100, beta of 50, beta of 200, doesn't matter. All those transistors are going to go into saturation. Therefore, the current will always equal the saturation current. Every single circuit that we make will produce 14 and a half mils, and therefore the same exact brightness on the LED. You can make a load line for this. Right here I see... PCE over here. And what we wind up with is this thing operating in the two extreme points, either in cutoff or in saturation. Right? So for this circuit, your saturation current, as calculated, right? VCC minus the LED divided by 200 ohms would give you a pretty 
pretty good approximation. Okay, 5 volts minus 2, that's 3 volts over 200 would be 15 milliamps if you wanted to do it that way. We throw in the point 0.1 here just to be a little bit more accurate. And there you go. We're not operating out here or out here or any of the Q points that we would have looked at and, uh, you know, preceding kind of circuits when we looked at the you know, basic um, common emitter configuration, right? This is either going to operate here, this is the on state, or it's going to operate here in the off state. Beautiful. Okay. The way you can look at this is that when this thing is on, right, you have a certain power supply back here. There's a certain voltage for the LED. This, like I said, is nearly zero when it's on. So whatever's left over, what's left, drops here. That means you can program the current very easily by just putting in a value of RC. You know, if you said, hey, I want to crank this up to, you know, 20 mils, 25 mils, you know, some other value, well, you can see it's really just an Ohm's law relation. You know, if I said, oh, I want a um, uh, you know, nice round number. I only want 10 mils. This is too bright. Okay. Well, we're going to have, you know, three volts basically out of this part of it, right? If, if I'm going to use the same numbers, if I say that's five volts and this is two volts, and we do approximate that as zero, that gives us three volts left. Okay, how do I get 10 mils? Well, three volts divided by what gets me 10 mils? That's well, going to be 300 ohms. So I can program that current by just changing the value of R. That's really nice. And then all I have to do as far as RB is concerned, I just have to make sure that the value that I use is sufficient so that I get a, an effectively small beta so that any transistor that I use could, you know, be expected to put this transistor in saturation. So, you know, an effective beta of maybe 10 or 15 or 20, um, that should be sufficient. Right. This is uh, literally called an active high driver. Because high turns this on, turns on the load. You can scale this up so that this could be something like a, a motor instead of just an LED. It's also possible to make an active low driver. For that, we would use um, a PNP transistor. Um, but in any case, this is one way in which you can get very stable current. Force the thing into saturation or not. Well, the remaining question, obviously, is how do we get a, a circuit to produce stable current without having it go into saturation? You know, if I want a linear amplifier, I don't want it to go into saturation. This works well for a digital application on off, but for a continuously variable sort of thing, like an analog amplifier, that's not going to cut it. Well, that's going to be the subject of future video.